Hello friends. So PSG, the infrastructure grammar. Now, as you have seen, there's a infrastructure grammar. You have two categories, only syntactic categories. Or we can say in simple words, phrases. Phrases, syntactic. Because phrases are to do with the syntax. And lexical means words. Lexical means words. This is words. And the phrases. Phrases we have, noun phrase, verb phrase, then we have an adjective phrase, adverb phrase, and a prepositional phrase, and auxiliary. Yeah, we have seen what are the components of this, isn't it? Okay. And notations also. Phrase structure rules have got a, uh, they are rewrite rules. Rewrite rules means you have got, on the left side you will get the phrase name of the phrase, NP. And then there will be an arrow. This arrow means rewrite us or explain us. What generalize us? That's the meaning. We have seen these things, but once again I am repeating. And then you have got the uh, NBEs, we have seen. And when you say this uh, round brackets, that means it's optional, isn't it? Round brackets means optional, elements are optional. That means you can have a noun phrase with a noun alone, adjective and a noun, eternal adjective and a noun, eternal adjective, noun, and the preposition. Like that, we have seen all these things, isn't it? And we also saw curly brackets. No? That is this. When we have got what is called with uh, tense, plus, and past. Plus means present, and past means past. Now they are mutually exclusive. You have to choose one from the other. I think that's clear. Now we will do some uh, derivations. And we have found now uh, uh, what, will, what will the phrase structure uh, grammar do? It will produce kernel sentences or it will produce basic sentences. Kernel sentences are basic. A basic sentence is the structure is S. S is the largest, largest, synda, largest syntactic structure. La, largest syntactic structure. S. The others are phrases. Now, when you have S, is always NB, auxiliary, and VP. And we have seen how to do this, right? A simple sentence would be something like this. Let's say, and what does, again, uh, we can see it produces and it explains. Fresh structure grammars, they produce the sentence and also they explain the sentence, make things explicit to you. That's the model that you can present there. Yes, very good. And it's an improvement on IC analysis, right? Okay. So we can see now, kernel sentence or you saw now the dictative, you saw the accent we have seen. Now let's see another one. Cleopatra, you know Cleopatra, isn't it? Cleopatra. Cleopatra. Mm. Uh, was. Ah, sorry, not was. You can say Cleopatra attracted. Send <laughs> it. Attracted Anthony. That is Mark Anthony. This is a kernel sentence, okay. Now you see S sentence and you see MP, auxiliary, VP. MB you have got only one word, that is Cleopatra. And that is a noun, MB is a noun. Uh, auxiliary you have got a, a tense is must. Tense is must. Then uh, that we know it is past. And uh, nothing more. Uh, here we have got attract, attract, and here we have got uh, NB, and NB is a noun, so Anthony. Anthony. So attract past is attract. Attract past is attract. So clear better, attract Anthony. Okay, <laughs> a simple sentence. Yeah. Now let us see. I have told you now, the auxiliary is, auxiliary means, you have got the ox, you have tense is must, and then you have model, models are, uh, then half plus en, half plus en is perfect, and then b plus 
uh, in that is progressive. So this is the full development of an uh, an oxalate. Means oxalate has tense is must the model half plus en is perfect. Perfect. This is perfect. And this is progressive. Progressive. Model, you know, uh, can accept them. Can could accept them. Tense is must. But you can have model. You can have model and perfect, model and perfect and progressive. Let's see how are we going to do this. Okay. Let's Paris, you know, Paris, you have heard of Paris, no? Now the city Paris, our lover of uh, uh, Helen, Helen and Paris, Trojan War, yes. Paris uh, might, might have been dreaming of Helen. Let's Paris might have been dreaming of Helen. Now you have got a model here, you have a perfect here, and you have a progressive here. And then so also. So you have all the three model, perfect, progressive. Now you see how are we going to make this explicit sentence? You have got a NB and VP and auxiliary. So in this auxiliary we have NB is a noun that is Paris, only noun. And tense, you know, tense that is past. Okay. Now auxiliary, auxiliary is may. And uh, perfect, perfect is half plus en. And progressive is B plus NG. So, uh, and uh, VP is uh, dream. Dream is VP. Okay, sometimes you may get confused a little, therefore, VP. Dream. And uh, you have that is verb. And here we have got noun, and the noun is Helen. See now. So they are full development again. So you can see uh, past, past, uh, may, yes. That will become might, might. Then how been, might have been. Being dream, dream plus ing. Should go with dream, no? Been dreaming. Dreaming, e r e a m ing. Ah, here we have got in the uh, off. This is a pp. Sorry, sorry, guy. Eh? That is off. Uh, then we have got a pp has got a p and the n p. Sorry, eh? Yes, I I just missed that off. Doesn't matter, but it is clear. P is off and NB is a noun and that is head. So this will be the sentence. Look at this. So you have Paris, past May. This is what you know, this is a rule in English. You know what is that rule? Tense is always attached to the auxiliary. Tense is always attached to the auxiliary. So here you can see model auxiliary. So may takes the tense, not drums. May takes the tense past. So may becomes might. Then how n is there? So how been? How n is have been. Then dream is the verb here. So dream ing dreaming. So you have nb tense model 
perfect, progressive, and other things. Did you understand? <laughs> Simple, no? Okay, let's have one more. So it becomes, it will be easy. One or two, any number you can see. Simple ones also we can see. See that? Yeah, I'll see. Yeah, yes, then uh, you, uh, you can separate. Caesar, Caesar might have, might, uh, okay, not might have, that's another one. Yes, could have, okay. Caesar could have, could have uh, saved his life. Saved his life. Do you remember no? Caesar was stabbed to death. He could have saved his life. Isn't it? Now, what did you do? See, sentence, and you have NP, VP, and auxiliary. So, NP is Caesar. Uh, you have got tense is must and can, can, and then uh, have in, now progressive, BP is save, save, NP is, you have got a, uh, his life, that is, then the NB is a, uh, NB is uh, a phrase, isn't it? His life. And his is, you can say, like my life, his life, her life, adjective. Isn't it? It can be considered as an adjective here. And uh, that is his life is a uh, noun, that is life. Or you can say possessive. Possessive, possessive adjective. Therefore, we say adjective to become clear. We can say possessive adjective. Otherwise, it's okay. It's like adjective. It's an adjective. So, it's very clear. No? Caesar, tense, can and tense, past tense, therefore, could. How? How? How in? Past participle of this verb. How in means past participle of this verb. How same? His life. Caesar could have saved his life. Is it? It's as simple as that, isn't it? Now you, you are, uh, you are getting some what you call excitement. No? Oh, you can say. See, one point, most important point is this: the tense is always carried by the oxygen. Primary auxiliary or modal auxiliary. Understand? Never, tense is never attached to the main verb. The main verb in English cannot take the tense, tense mark. Tense can only be taken by this. Then you will ask me, no? suppose a sentence is like this. You have a sentence like this. Huh? Uh, just now I made a statement, no? Tense can be only taken by, taken by oxen. So, for example, he said, you will say, he ate, he ate mango. So, where is the oxen? He ate, there is an oxen. What is that? This is equal to, did eat. So, the tense is here. This is fused, <laughs> that's all. Well, if you want to do anything with the tense, you have to split it. He, he sentence, did he eat my, what did he eat? So, in that case, who is carrying the tense? The auxiliary is carrying the tense. So, it's a very important point. Auxiliary, only auxiliary can carry the tense. Or only to auxiliary, you can attach the tense. Understand? Other one, we will see it, but it is like a A plus B whole square. When you say 8, 8 is like a, a plus b whole square. Understand? 
then what will happen to you? Then you explain this, it will be a square plus 2ab plus b square. Like that. When you explain this, it will be uh, do plus each. And that becomes third person singular plus plus each. Past tense becomes the plus each. Understand? So each, each, each. Where is the tense? Tense is here. Understand that? Yes. So I think that is now clear to you. Okay. So let us have another. Faustus. Let us see Faustus. You cannot remember Faustus now. Yes. Faustus. The might have might have signed the pact pact with Mephistopheles. Mephistopheles. Remember no? So first is signing the pact with his own blood. Yes. So let us say. Sentence? Yes. You have got NB, auxiliary, VP. This stands it's a template. Yes. Or a presupposed framework. It's a presupposed framework or a template. Understand? Or you can say a schema. Schema. No? S C H E M A. Schema. It is a schema. Or a final sentence. VP. Now, NB is here, you know, Faustus, only one word. Here, tense is must. Then you have got a model and also perfect. So this, yeah. And the verb, you have got a sign. And signed the pact NB. So this, NB. NB has a NB and then you have got a pact uh, NB has within it the pact that is uh, NB and then you have NB this is one and PP NB has got a determiner and uh, N that is pact PP you have got the P and uh, NB. This is with and this is my list of this. Understand? This is. There you are. So it is made clear. Huh? First is tense. Tense is model is may. So here come may. Tense is past and uh, perfect. That is B EN. EN is sign of perfect and sign. Sign. So you have may, might. Are you following? Perfect have. Might have. Sign. Past participle. This is past participle of sign. Sign. Sign the, here the, fact. With a pistol. Listen. So you have got a comparatively long sentence, but you can easily describe it. Listen. You can make it explicit. But from here, you write this noun phrase. You know, this is up to this is auxiliary, and this is auxiliary, and this is uh, the main verb, and this is the NP, and this is the uh, PP. That is. Uh, that is prepositional phrase. Is that clear? Yes. Uh, let us say something. Uh, one more example. You see enough examples for you? What? You are taking this down. You should be able to do it yourself. Yes. Shagundala. You can say Shagundala. Shagundala. For God. Uh, for God. Uh, the ring. Or what the ring? So here we have got a sentence NB, auxiliary, and VP, 
Trans is past and nothing else. No progression, no past, nothing. And here I got to forget. And here I got to NB. And that is uh, the terminal and noun, noun the ring. Okay, here forgot. Simple. Second law forgot the ring. Any sentence. Simple sentence, complicated sentence, or anything you can explain like this. Okay. Now you will immediately ask me a question. Isn't it? What is the question? Can you show a phrase? Can you draw a phrase structure tree for a question? Yeah. So that is one of the limitations of phrase structure you know, if you ask me like that. That's the limitation, what can we do? So it is to overcome this limitation, we have got the next grammar that is transformational generating grammar. Understand? Okay. Now you have got, uh, let's say, the teacher, the teacher, priest, priest, uh, good students, uh, clubbers, uh, good, good, uh, good students, good students. Uh, why, why don't we say present tense? Can I have a present tense also? Why always past tense? So you have got praise, praises. So the sentence schema is NP auxiliary BP. Okay? NP you have got a eternal and now, the term is the and noun is teacher. So it? Auxiliary is percentage. And you have got verb praise. And you have got a uh, good students, NB. NB has a ADJ and a N. ADJ is good and N is students. So here, naturally you will ask me, praise, and so, praise, but we say praises, because it is the person's symbol. Now here again, this is one of the limitations of PS, PSD, what is that? This context free, understand, not context sensitive. Context free means what? Context free grammar means, doesn't bother third person, first person, second person. Now, do you remember I told you? The train is context free. Doesn't bother about anything. Once the train starts, it goes. Whatever happens on the way is not concerned or worried about. But the bus is not context sensitive. <laughs> so context sensitive grammars will say this is the person singular, present tense, and therefore there should be a subject. This is context free grammar. Understand? So these are limitations of PSC. And that is why you have got another grammatical theory that is transformational generating because they have got different rules affix coping rules, flip flop rules, flip flop rules and things like that okay then one, then question word insertion rule absolutely lot, lot of rules are but here is not right okay then you have got uh, uh, another simple sentence government government um, government Government, bars, spikes. Spikes. Simple. In a sentence NB auxiliary VP. That is NB is government. Auxiliary plus sentence. Plus. And VP is bar. NB is spikes. Simple. So this is bars. Third person singular and therefore bars. In uh, PSC, it's context free. And so doesn't tell you third person singular or anything like that. Yes. 
Yes, is that clear? Any, any example you want now? Any more example? Is that clear to you? That's the point. I think it's clear to you. Fine? Very good. So, so we have come up to this. Now, in the next class we will show, we will see what are the limitations of PST. Okay, with that, PST will be, we will come to an end. We will come to an end as far as PST is concerned. PSG is concerned and then we will take up in the next class transformational generative gram. Right? Till then, bye.